Hello everyone and welcome back to Towergate. It is Towergate day number 888, 888, September the 5th, 2019, Thursday. Thank you so much for tuning in. Alrighty, before I uh, get started on the uh, important news of the day, and we have some important news today, uh, I just want to, uh, before I do that, I just want to touch on one thing, uh, which I'm sure many of you can relate to. Uh, it has to do with Trump bringing jobs back to America, which he's doing a fine job of. But there's an entire industry that has left America that I would love to see come back to America. And that would be the customer service industry. The customer service industry. Do you remember when you used to pick up the phone and call a customer service number and get someone who went, Hello, this is so-and-so customer service. Janet speaking. May I help you? Or, Hello, this is so-and-so customer service. Bob speaking. May I help you? You remember those days? They're gone. What do you get now? Ring, ring, ring. Hello? This is what, 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 customer service? May I help you? Your account number, please? Yes, that's right. That's what you get. We need to bring the customer service industry back to the United States. I'm tired of talking to people who don't speak English. Not a lick. Yes, I know that they've learned to read a script, and I know that they've learned to pronounce the words on the script, but I don't think they know what they mean. Why? Because they're in India. India. So I know that my Sprint or my um, Norton security subscription was ending. I got the email three days ago. So I go on down to get a gift card for $89.99 for the cost of my one year subscription for my Norton security. Why? Because I never put my credit card number that's attached to my bank account into any computer or online ever. Never. If I'm going to make an online purchase, whether it's Amazon, subscriptions, whatever I buy online, I go get a gift card for the exact amount, and that is what I use. Because I don't want to use a credit card tied to my personal account number. Because I don't want to get my identity stolen and my bank account drained. So, I use a gift card. Okay, so I go to my, uh, I go to my Norton page, and I go in to change my credit card number. Because it's a new gift card. I used last year's gift card, which is different. And now I have a new gift card. It's ready to go. It's charged up, hundred bucks. I want to make my eighty-nine ninety-nine payment and just make my payment and get my damn year of Norton Security and be done with it. I put the information in, put it all in. Get home today and I get an email from them saying, "Well, your service may be discontinued if we don't receive your payment." Really? Well, yesterday I just went in and put all that payment information in your system. So I go look at the page and the information is not there. So what do I do next? Well, I call their freaking eight hundred number. Oh, it's not even an 800 number, by the way. No, no, no. It's not an 800 number. It's an 850 number. Where's that? That's a zip code for Florida. So now they're hitting me for a toll call. And do I get someone from Florida on the phone? No, I don't get sh sweet sugar cheeks down there from Florida. What do I get? I get some idiot from India who can't speak a, a word of freaking English. And after waiting for like 15 minutes on hold, I finally get... Hello, this is my daughter. I'm going to help your customer service. Get your account And I have to repeat everything three times. And I can't tell what the hell she's saying when she's talking to me. I have no idea. I pick up about every third word. Oh, no, sir. You can't put that number in. I have to connect you to the security. Put your credit card number in. I put my credit card number in. It's missing. It's not getting all the numbers for some reason. I got to go back and repunch it in. I do it over and over again. Finally, after like 25 minutes. 25 minutes. I get to the end of the call and say, there, there he goes. Is that all good? Well, sir, that now if you want to do your annual subscription fee, oh, I, I have to do it. I'm like, huh? What just happened? What just happened? Because I'm pretty sure at the very beginning of the call, I said very clearly, hi, my name is, spelled my name perfectly. Phonetically, phonetically, I gave her the phonetic spelling of my name, so I knew she couldn't screw it up. I said, I want to renew my $89.95 subscription for one year with Norton. You've got my name. You've got my number. You verified my email. I've just punched in all my credit card numbers. Is that done? Well, sir, if you want to go out to go out So, here I am, a customer. I'm trying my best. I'm trying my best. I'm trying my level best to give them 100 bucks of my money. They don't want to take it. They clearly don't want to take it, because if they did want to take it, they'd make it much simpler. I like to make it easy for people to buy from me. 
if I'm selling something? No, no, no. Let's put them through hell. <laughs> you want to buy something? <laughs> we got something for you, pal. That's right. That's right. I just want to renew my freaking subscription. That's all I want to do. I don't want to talk to this person. She doesn't even know what the hell I'm talking about. Can't speak a lick of English. Can't fool me. Is everybody in customer service now work in India? Is it possible now to dial a customer service number and get someone on the phone who actually speaks English? And this is a company that makes billions and billions of dollars a year. They can't fork over a few extra dimes to pay an American 10 bucks an hour to take your damn phone call? How much are they paying these people from India? 30 cents an hour? If any of you know of an American service provider for internet protection, which I can actually call and get a human on the phone who speaks English, preferably within the United States, please leave it in the comments section. Now, let's go on to the news of the day. Well, it looks like Obama's lawyer, Greg Craig, has been found not guilty. Imagine that. <laughs> He's been found not guilty for lying about FARA violations. You know, the same thing that Flynn uh, was charged with, the same thing that Manafort was charged with, the same thing that Papagalopoulos was uh, threatened with. Yes, that's right. Manafort guilty. Gates guilty. That's right. But not Greg Craig. Oh, no, no, no. Obama's lawyer, Greg Craig, involved in the exact same Ukrainian stuff that Manafort was involved in. Literally involved with Manafort in the exact same thing. Manafort gets stoned in solitary confinement and a, literally a life uh, sentence. Greg Craig, <laughs> not guilty. Yes, he was charged with lying about FISA violations. It looks like uh, Greg Craig fought the law <laughs> and the law lost. That happens every day. Oh, yes. Manafort fought the law, <laughs> the law won. Papagalopoulos fought the law, the law won. But Greg Craig fought the law, and the law lost. <laughs> hmm, what does that tell you? Yes, what does that tell you? Equal justice under the law. I don't think so. Attorney General Barr, you need to get uh, busy cleaning up that mess called the Department of Justice. Greg Craig found not guilty of the very same thing that Manafort's literally being tortured over. Unbelievable. Well, that's the way it goes in the swamp. Okay, you're gonna like this next story. I mean, it fits right in. And eh, McCabe will be the keynote speaker for the Pennsylvania Democratic Party fundraiser on September 21st of 2019. Tickets are $80 at the door. <laughs> there you go. And you want to go hear Andy raise money at 80 bucks a plate? And when they tell you on the program, former FBI uh, director uh, Andy McCabe, acting FBI director Andy McCabe, will be the keynote speaker. They failed to tell you that he lied three times to the IG and was fired. How about the, how, how about they put in the, in, in, in the headline there, former FBI acting FBI director Andy McCabe, who was fired for lying to the uh, FBI three times, uh, under oath is going to be the keynote speaker for tonight's uh, uh, $80 uh, uh, plate uh, fundraiser. <laughs> they left that part out. My, my, my. So there you go. If you want to see, if you want to donate to the Democratic Party, uh, you want to play 80 bucks for a plate, not sure why you want to do that, um, then you can go listen to Andy McCabe in Pennsylvania, uh, the keynote speaker for the Democratic Party fundraiser on September 21st, 2019. Something tells me not a single damn one of my subscribers are going to show. Hmm. Well, 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 what do we have here? It looks like Loretta, get back Loretta Lynch. Get back Loretta. Get back Loretta Lynch has thrown Comey and Yates, silly Sally Yates, under the bus on the Carter Page FISA. Yes, that's right. <laughs> You know, I've watched Loretta Lynch in quite a few hearings. i got to give her credit for one thing, and now I know why the Clintons recruited her way back in the 90s. That woman may be the best I've ever seen at not answering a single question. You could question her for nine and a half hours straight. You could have Perry Mason. You could have uh, the guy from Hawaii Five-0. Uh, you could have the guy from Mission Impossible. You could have, uh, uh, you know, who's the guy that uh, went after, uh, uh, 
what's the guy, the Manson guy, I forget his name. You could have the best prosecutor, bring in Rudy, bring in, bring in the best prosecutors in the world, the best questioners in the world. I guarantee you for 19 straight hours, they could question Loretta Lynch and she wouldn't answer a single damn question. Not a one. I have no recollection. I can't seem to recall. I just don't remember. I don't know. I can't answer that. It's top secret. Yes, that's right. Loretta Lynch has never answered an actual question in her life about her dealings. And that's why she was recruited by Slick and the Rotten Reverend. They saw talent in Loretta Lynch. But Loretta Lynch did tell Bob Goodblatt in the Oversight Committee that she was not involved in the Carter Page FISA. That's what she told Bob Goodblatt. She wasn't involved in the Carter Page FISA. She also said she had no recollection. No rec and that's a hillbilly word. I'm sick and tired of these uh, uh, elitist uh, liberals on the East Coast using a hillbilly word like recollect. That's for us hillbillies to use. For you, it's remember. But nevertheless, she said that she had no recollection of being briefed on the page FISA or signing off on it. No recollection. I can't really remember, you know, that Carter Page thing. Let me tell you what. If you were in any way, shape, or form involved in anything having to do with Carter Page, you would remember something like that, wouldn't you? Don't you think? He's a spy for the Russians, working with the Trump administration, working with Trump, candidate Trump, to steal the election. I'm pretty sure you'd remember that discussion, don't you think? But she told Goodlatte that she had no recollection of being briefed on the Page FISA or signing off on it. I can't remember if I signed that damn FISA warrant or not. Just can't remember. But, but, get back Loretta Lynch, told the Judiciary Committee, another committee, something different. She said that Comey was briefing the entire NSC cabinet by June of 2016. Actually, it was earlier than that. We know the exact date, or pretty close. We know it was after March 21st and, and somewhere within a week of March the 21st of 2016. And who are some of the people that absolutely would have been there when you're talking about the National Security Council? It would have been the Secretary of State, the Head of Treasury, the Head of DOD, the Head of Homeland Security, the Attorney General, the Head of the CIA, the White House Chief of Staff, the UN Ambassador, and it would have probably been others. But those are the people who are always part of the USC. They are the permanent USC counsel for the White House. Now that we know who the characters are, let's go back. Lynch told the Judiciary Committee that Comey was briefing the entire NSC cabinet about Carter Page, and that would have been somewhere within a week of, slightly a week after March the 21st of 2016. This would have been before Papa Galopoulos' trip, uh, I mean, before Carter Page's trip to Moscow. This would have been before uh, Papa Galopoulos' um, uh, meeting with Alexander Down the Hatch Downer. This would have been before uh, any of the dossier claims. This would have been um, uh, before Operation Crossfire Hurricane. This would have been two to three months before any of that is when Comey was briefing Lynch and other members of the NSC cabinet about Carter Page. But she says she was, but she told Goodlatte's committee something different. So she's telling the, the Judiciary Committee one thing and telling the House Oversight Committee another. We know that Comey did brief Loretta Lynch, Susan Rice, John Brennan, and Clapper about Carter Page in the late spring of 2016. We know that to be true. That's according to Lynch's testimony to the House Intelligence Committee. Lynch also told Jim Jordan that neither the Mueller team or Horowitz interviewed her in regards to the Carter Page FISA. And we know that after Carter Page refused to lie for the FBI, he became a target. That's when he became a target. When they came and said, yeah, we want you to appear in court to take down these Russian gangsters, and here's what we want you to say. And Carter Page said, oh, that's bullshit. I'm not going to say that. That's a lie. I'm not going to go lie for you guys. Really? 
Okay, well, thanks a lot. And the next thing you know, he becomes the target of a FISA. We also know that the targeting of Page and Papagopoulos began months before the FBI learned of the Steele memos, which would eventually become the dossier. We know that Steele first briefed uh, the FBI, Mr. Gatta, over in Rome in July of 2016 on his first memo. We know that there was a meeting two weeks later where FBI agents came over from the States, and we can assume that Strzok or possibly Priestep was among them, and he briefed several FBI agents again. That was the second briefing Steele gave to the FBI in the summer of 2016, and all of this occurred before any of these, uh, and the FISAs, I mean, uh, were taken out before either of those meetings with Christopher Steele and the FBI. So, it appears that Loretta Lynch is lying, and it also appears that she's trying to throw silly Sally Yates under the bus, along with Comey. I certainly hope Mr. Durham interviews Get Back Loretta, because she's absolutely going to find contradictions. And I'm telling you, if you put even just a little bit of pressure on silly Sally Yates, she'll sing like a, like, like a partridge. She'll sing like a partridge. Yep. One of the big hits. She'll be breaking out partridge hits. Partridge family hits. Hey, hey, yeah. Come on, get happy. Oh, yeah. I didn't read the FISA warrant. Come on, get happy. Oh, that's right. Go ahead. Sing us a tune, Loretta. Woman can lie her ass off without batting an eye. She won't answer a damn question. Now, let's get back to some more news. Well, many people following closely what's going on in the UK right now as we watch the deep state in the UK. Uh, I've never, I, I, you know, what we're seeing here in the States is, is bad. It's real bad. Uh, and I don't know which is worse. What's going on? I mean, you talk about, I mean, at this point, the deep state has totally taken off the mask. They've just taken off the mask completely. They're not even hide it. They don't even try to hide it anymore. These people voted for Brexit three and a half years ago. Every damn one of those uh, high-level MPs and government uh, suck-ups in the UK said that they would honor the vote. They would honor the vote. We're going to have a vote. We're going to have a referendum, and we will honor that vote. They've done nothing to honor that vote. They've done everything they can to sabotage it. Now, most of you keeping up uh, with what's going on over there, uh, and the latest news on that is that now it appears that Nigel Farage has basically come out and told, told uh, had a speech, and he's basically come out and, and told Boris Johnson, hey, if, 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 if you've got the stones to, to, to hang tight and go for the no-deal Brexit, I can promise you I will deliver Brexit to you, which means you'll have Brexit and the Tories, the Conservative Party, uh, backing Johnson, and he says, yes, have, those, have a snap election October 14th, and we will deliver. If you promise that we, Nigel's basically saying, if you promise that if you can't reach a deal, a good deal, uh, that we'll, that, and we'll get a no-deal Brexit on the 31st, I will, we, and you have them snap elections, I will, I will have my uh, Brexit party folks come out and vote for you in big numbers, and we will take over the parliament, and we will give you the votes you need to do the no-deal Brexit. That's sort of the pitch that Farage is making uh, to Bojo. But he's also skeptical, thinking that Bojo may want to try to cut some sort of a deal. But I, I guess the part of this that's missing that I haven't heard anybody talking about is the fact that the EU has to actually go along with it. The EU has to go along with it, the deal, whatever that. Now, they had their deal, uh, and, and Theresa May tried to pass it three times, and it failed miserably. And that wasn't even something that was going to please them. And if you listen to what these nuts over in the EU are saying, remember, the deal has to be unanim unanimously approved. They have to get all 28 of the EU countries to sign on to anything that, that, that would be negotiated between the UK and the EU. Do you think that's going to happen? Do you think you're going to need all 28 of those countries in the EU to sign on to any type of a deal that Boris Johnson wants to cut? Of course not. No more than they would with Theresa May or anybody else. And quite honestly, there's about a half a dozen countries in the EU right now, maybe more, who've said they're sick and tired of dealing with it. They're done. They just want the UK, including France, to just leave. Just go. Please, just go. Hard Brexit, no Brexit, this Brexit. Th I don't care. Just go. Please. This thing is turning into a shit show. A shit show. Man, I hate the deep state. 
I really do. They give me heartburn. Yes, they do. They give me heartburn. And I'm getting very fed up with them. I'm starting to lose patience with them. And I'm generally a very relaxed individual, as you can tell. But currently, I'm a bit pissed off. <clears throat> Devin Nunes has filed a racketeering lawsuit against Confusion GPS for working with the Campaign for Accountability to derail his investigation into Fusion Confusion GPS. Now, CFA is essentially a far left wing lobbying organization, an activist group, and it appears that they made a payment to Fusion Confusion GPS of $140,000 for research and then turned around and filed an ethics complaint in a lawsuit against Devin Nunes. So here we have this uh, left-wing activist organization giving Confusion GPS $140,000 for research. Then shortly thereafter, they turn around and file a lawsuit against Nunes, three lawsuits actually. Uh, they filed three ethics, well actually they filed three ethics complaints and a lawsuit against Nunes. So now he's filed a lawsuit, a racketeering lawsuit against Confusion GPS uh, for collaborating and colluding with Campaign for Accountability to derail his investigation into Confusion GPS. Good luck, Devin. Good luck. You're going to need it. Maybe it'll turn out better than it turned out with uh, Greg Craig. He was found not guilty. <laughs> oh, them folks over at Confusion GPS, they're the salt of the earth. They only mean to, they just are out there trying to advance the cause for uh, democracy and freedom and support the Constitution. That's what they're all about over there at Confusion GPS. They would, they would never engage in such type activities. I'm sure of it. They're as clean as the wind-driven snow, pure as yellow piss. That's right. I'm sure things will work out very well for Glenn Simpson and his cronies who are paid by the Rotten Reverend Clinton to uh, dream up a phony story which they pumped into the FBI uh, to get a false investigation against Trump which would eventually lead uh, to a special counsel for the purpose of impeachment. Uh, other than that, everything's cool. Well, what do we have here? San Francisco. It looks like San Francisco has labeled the NRA a domestic terrorist organization. Hmm. What do you think about that? Now, if the NRA has been declared been declared by San Francisco a domestic terrorist organization, then that means if you're a member of the NRA in San Francisco, then you must be a terrorist. A domestic terrorist, which is probably better than a foreign terrorist, or maybe not. It doesn't really matter, though. So they have a big problem with people who have uh, who uh, uh, belong to the NRA, but they don't have a problem in this world with the fact that uh, when you go to San Francisco, you have to step over piles of poop. I'm sorry. Can't say pee close up to the microphone. Piles of poop, poop. That's what I said. Piles of poop in the streets. No problem. NRA card, go to jail. Poop on the street. <laughs> Good job, bro. Oh, but we're not done with San Francisco. No, 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 no. Because we have Gavin Newsom. Gavin Newsom has signed a bill that will allow citizens in California to refuse to help an officer in distress. So if you see a cop who's basically being outgunned about 90 to 1 by some gangbangers and you happen to have your Glock with you, you're not allowed to uh, drop by and help. Screw him. Fuck him. That's the way it goes in San Francisco. Maybe he can hide behind a pile of poop. You can get the shit blown out of him. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Oh, but by the way, profanity alert. Let's see. <clears throat> God, this video's not over yet. <laughs> well. As I told you, the Rotten Reverend Clinton's probably given the word to start the takedown of Joe Biden. Uh, it'd probably be about a four to six week process, four to eight week process maybe, because by the end of October, the Rotten Reverend Clinton will be ready for the draft Hillary campaign. 
So first we had the article from the Washington Post. <coughs> the Washington Post article, which uh, blasted Biden for his fake war story. Uh, and then what, what do we get almost a week later? The New York Times writes an article asking if Biden really wants to be president. Does he really want to go through this? Does he really want to do this? <laughs> so the two biggest liberal mags that there is, the two biggest li uh, liberal bird, bird cage liners that you can possibly uh, delve into, the Washington Post and the New York Times have now both written articles very critical of Crazy Joe Biden. Where do you think that order is coming from? I mean, they work for the DNC. And who is the DNC? The Clintons. So there's your first two stories. And, all, of course, The Nation also wrote a hit piece. Uh, not a hit piece, but just a, you know, a story basically saying Biden's not up to the job. And, and that's just the ones I know about. Not, I wasn't even looking. Those are the ones that just landed in my lap. I guess if I went scouring the left-wing newswire, I could probably find 50 more stories. But I would say that the claws are out now. The Rotten Reverend has probably made the call. Uh, and uh, you will begin to see over the next probably four to eight weeks uh, hit pieces coming out on Biden. Not even so much hit pieces as much as just, you know, c calling him out and saying, I don't think the guy's got going to make it. Because once Biden's gone, there is no one left except for a bunch of people on the far left. Bernie or, or, or uh, Liawatha. Not going to happen. It's not going to happen. There'll be only one person left, really. And that's the rotten reverend. Unless Bloomfield wants to, or Bloomberg wants to throw his hat in the ring, and I don't think he will. Maybe, but I, I kind of doubt it. Maybe it could bring John Kerry in, but I, I don't think he can raise the money, and I don't think he has any organization. The Rotten Reverend is the only one that's continued to raise the money and can, and can raise the money. She's the only one that still has organization. She still has her organization together. She absolutely does. She still runs the DNC. Uh, I just don't see any other alternative. Once Biden's gone... You know, they'll have to draft Hillary. <laughs> that's the way it looks to me, and I'm sure that's the way it looks to Hillary because she planned it that way. Let's see. I hope I'm wrong. I hope I'm dead-ass wrong. I hope Joe Biden is the nominee. <laughs> That'd be great. Well, what do we have here? Marianne Williamson. Quote, I didn't think the left was so mean. <laughs> She's obviously not been paying attention. And then she says, I didn't think the left lied like this. <laughs> she definitely hasn't been paying attention. Now I know what you're thinking. Well, Marianne Williamson? Wow. So she's really caught on now. She now knows that the left really is mean. And she knows that they really do lie. Wow. She must be like really on top of it, right? <laughs> Wrong. Because the very next thing that she says is, yeah, they lie about crystals. <laughs> it's like face plant. She says two things that really make a hell of a lot of sense. I didn't think the left was this mean, and I didn't think the left lied like this. And then she says, they lie about crystals. There it goes. There it goes. For a few moments there, I had hope. I'm reading this first thing, and I go, Marianne Williamson says, I didn't think the left was so mean. Wow. Whoa. And then she says, I didn't think that the left lied like this. Wow. Whoa, she must be woke, man. She must have got red-pilled. And then I read, they lie about crystals. <laughs> Alrighty then. Oh, boy. Well, as I just said, what, two, three videos ago, I said, I don't think that those moderate Democrats that won those 52 or 53 seats running as basically conservatives, almost, uh, in the midterms, which is why they were able to win the House back, they had about 52, 53 seats in pretty much red and purple states where they just simply uh, talked like conservatives, <laughs> and they won those seats. Those same moderate, what they're describing as moderate Democrats, are still not on board for impeachment, according to sources inside the Capitol. The Capitol. Yes, they're still not on board, nor will they be. The penguin doesn't give a damn. The penguin's all about the penguin. So, yes, 
The penguin's all about the penguin. He, he he's totally just about playing to his to his district. That's it. His own voting district. He's going to investigate uh, Saggy Daniels uh, payments and uh, McDougal payments, all of which has been re done and over with a long time ago. The payments were not illegal. It's perfectly fine. Rich people like Trump pay off, you know, Playboy bunnies all the time, every day. That's what they do. They got a lot of money. And chicks like that like money. And guys with a lot of money like that like chicks that look like that. And so they, they play around with them. They pay them off. It goes on every day. I don't give a damn. Just create some damn jobs, keep my taxes low, and don't fuck with me. That's all I ask. And Trump's doing a fine job. I don't give a damn who he's screwing. That's Melania's problem. And Melania's pretty fine. I don't think I'd be cheating on Melania if it were me, but that's just me. Uh, I think she's better looking than, uh, way better looking than uh, Saggy. Now, McDougal's pretty cute, but, you know, I don't know. Uh, Melania's classy. She's beautiful. She's classy. Fine woman. Uh... But that's just my opinion. Uh, let's see here. Well, let's not forget, since we are kind of uh, about a week removed from this, or two weeks removed from the IG report on Comey, we've learned a lot of things. We've talked about them. But I think, uh, you know, and again, I said one of the most important things I think I learned uh, from the Comey released by the IG, uh, Huckleberry Horowitz, the custodian, uh, the, the guy who comes in and cleans up the mess, the guy who comes in and cleans up the mess. Uh, the thing I learned mostly from him, I've just had a lighting failure. Let me fix that. The thing that I learned mostly from that, of course, the most important thing to me was that, that uh, when Comey went to brief Trump on January the 5th, or January the 6th, rather, that he wasn't there to give the briefing that he told everyone he was, it's what he told Congress, it's what he told uh, everyone apparently, well, I'm going to go uh, give Trump a briefing uh, counterintelligence briefing, letting him know what's going on. Well, we now know that's not, that's not what he was doing at all. He was acting as a, essentially, a spy, <laughs> an informant for the FBI. He was actually uh, part of the counterintelligence investigation. He was there to question Trump, to try to set Trump up, to try to frame Trump, to try to get Trump to say something, to create a trap for him. That's why he was there. And we all know that now, because we know what he did immediately afterwards. But let's talk about what he did the day before, January 5th, the day before he went to Trump Tower. Well, the day before, uh, and he writes this in his own book. In his own book, Comey says that he told, this is the day before he goes over and tries to friend Trump at Trump Tower. He goes over and writes that he told Obama, along with Biden and Susan Rice, on January 5th about his briefing with Trump. Also uh, sitting there was Clapper. Clapper, the unwitting idiot. So, and there was other people there, I do believe, but we know at least from Comey's description in the book that he went over to tell Obama, Biden, Rice, he and Clapper went over to tell Obama, Biden, and Rice on January 5th that the next day that they were going to go over and do this briefing. And apparently, um, when Comey told uh, 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 Obama about this briefing, uh, Obama asked a little more probing question about it and then Clapper said well you know jumped in as well the, the plan is is we're gonna brief him on this Russia stuff but then Trump but then Comey is gonna we're gonna leave and then Comey's gonna get him one-on-one -on -one and talk to him about this PP gate story at which point apparently according to Comey Obama sort of raised his eyebrows and then looked away and made a funny face and then looked back so this is what happened on the day before uh, certainly we know that they all knew exactly what the point was and what the purpose was it's all part of the setup. It's all so clear. It's right there. Comey puts it in his own damn book. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'll be back tomorrow with more Tower Game. Thank you. Bye.